Hey everybody, welcome to week 8. Um, I am doing post commentary for this battle. I couldn't do the re recording live. Um, just because, you know, a lot of noise and everything in the background when I was when we had the battle. But we are going against Nico. Nico is currently sitting in second place in the Violent Division SP in SPC, I believe, at 6-1. and one, Or 5-2, and two, something. Yeah, 5-2. and two. And... Um, I kind of want to get a brief talk about the team. You see, I kind of blew through it because I started recording a little bit late. But my Rotom has a magnet. Now, this Rotom is my week six Rotom. I um, accidentally forgot to gen my Rotom for this week. But this Rotom here had a similar moveset. And I was running out of time to get the team registered and everything. So this is kind of just what I went with. So he leads off with his Cyclozar, which is obviously probably going to shed tail. And then I let off with. I rolled him, of course. Um, with the magnet, we do get the electric side boosting. He doesn't have an immunity because he didn't bring his palace in. So, Volt Switch is pretty safe here, regardless of what he chooses to do. And he does, of course, go for the Shed Tail. Now, my hope is that Shed Tail, or my hope is that my Volt Switch is able to uh, break the sub, depend or you know, regardless of what comes in. But, um,. In comes the Sylveon. I was going to edit this video to where, you know, all the like waiting cutscenes were out, but I figured that would be a lot more work than it was worth. Just because I really don't want to spend all day on this. So I got the vote switch off on the incoming Sylveon on sub, and thankfully the sub faded. So I was super happy about that. Um. Coming into this part, I wasn't really sure, like, I don't really have a Sylveon switch in. I do have my, uh, it's max HP, but no special defense, it's max HP, max uh, special attack Gardevoir with the Assault Vest. So it was kind of like my Sylveon, Glaceon, you know, maybe switching or potential switching, but I didn't make it bulky like I made it last week. So it's more for focusing on doing damage and being able to take a hit as opposed to like going fast. So I sent out, um, sent out my Gardevoir, who's going to trace Pixelate, which doesn't really matter. And we're gonna click Moon Blast because obviously it's our strongest move. And we don't just don't have anything to hit Sylveon super effectively anyways. So we're still faster with no speed, we're still faster. It does about 35 to 40 percent. As she um uh, goes for the Shadow Ball, which does half. Which sucks because Mash HP A V still managed to do half to Gardevoir. But we're not special defense unless it's just HP, so I, that's, that's fair. But because it did have, we still don't have a switch into this thing. Which means everything is going to be taking massive damage. I just have to be able to put myself in a position to where I can get something to get some damage off on this thing. So it goes for another Shadow Ball. This does about half as well. And I think right here we went for the Leaf Storm, or it might have been Volt Switch. I think we just Volt Switch again. Can't remember, but at this point, my thought process was ooh, excuse me, on my thought process was I don't want anything else taking a shadow ball. So I'm pretty sure I just vote switched out. Now I also knew that my issue was okay. Hey, I'm faster than hit Sylveon, so even if I vote switch, something's gonna be hit by shadow ball as opposed to. Leave it roll him in to take the Shadow Ball and then Volt Switching out after. Which, of course, it would have died, but... Um, the only bulky thing that I have left is my Hippo. So, the Powder comes out. This is my first time using a male Hippo on. Because every week it's always been a female. So, yeah, as, as usual, this thing just chunks half my HP away. But he is getting low. He is getting low, so that's pretty much all I was like caring about right now. Is that was the fact that Sylveon's got like 25% HP, maybe 30. So I just went for rocks here because I knew that I could live another Shadow Ball. But I don't think Shadow Ball is like his only attack. I can't remember the entire battle, like you know, turn for turn, because I believe it was like two or three days ago. But, yeah, he does withdraw, and out came, what came out, Gyarados? No, it wasn't Gyarados that came out. 
It was Brute Bonnie, yeah. So my Hippopotamus set was I sped crept uh, no speed Brute Bonnet so that I could get some damage off with a body press. So Hippo had like 68, I think, speed EVs, probably less than that, but 68 speed EVs and then like, you know, max defense and the rest in HP. Or most of the rest in HP, like a little bit in attack. So I went for body press. I wasn't expecting the Chapel Berry, but I guess it's to be expected with me being Sarah fighting. So Chapel Berry comes out. Um, the Hippo being asleep is so hard here because I can't really, I mean, I can't use it and I can't leave it in to, to take it. I can't leave it in to take hits. So it's got to be, I have to be really careful with how I play with Hippo pretty much for like the rest of the game. So I sent out Rotom again, I believe. Yeah, so I rolled him again, and you have a C-Bomb, obviously that's not going to do a whole lot, it's not going to kill me, it did some damage, but it's not going to kill me, and then we take um, sand damage, which we also have to play around sand, because, I mean, I'm not really in a position to get my two sand immunities out of here, just yet, but we know, obviously, he can't support because I'm already asleep. Uh, the grass move isn't really going to do too much, we do know that he has Sucker Punch, too, but we don't know that, but... It's, it's a root bonnet. It's probably got Sucker Punch. So, but we don't have a switch hand, so we just gotta go ahead and stay in and just both switch out. Whatever happens, happens, because I just didn't have a switch hand. If I, and if Rotom dies, then I get a clean, you know, somebody comes in clean. So, yeah, in comes the Sucker Punch. Despite being a fairy type, obviously we can't bring in Gardevoir because it's also a Saki type. Sand is gone. This time, Sand is gone, anyways. Um, I think we brought Cinderace out here. I think it was Cinderace that we brought out here. But I'm not sure. I spent a lot of time thinking in this battle. Um, yeah, we went for the U-turn. Just, you know, obviously it's four times effective. And if he does switch out, then... Hey, we still switch out too. We went for Sucker Punch, and it did so much damage. That crit hurt me so much. We're dealing with it, but that crit hurt me so much. But um, he does die to the user, which is great for us, because now we don't have to deal with that thing anymore for the rest of the battle. And he's got just a little bit less defense on his team. Which, this my, the way I built my team, I was really struggling, because his team was kind of... His team was a little bit fat. I was really struggling to figure out how I was going to deal with it, so I kind of just went with like as much offense as possible while trying to maintain some semblance of being able to take a hit in the most where I think would be the most common areas. So like I said, I started to shorten this up like the, the communicating screens and stuff like that, you know, waiting because that does take up time, but I just didn't feel like it. So we're just gonna sit here and talk as we wait for Nico to make a move. And one of these turns, I, it might have been this one, but one of these was like waiting forever. Oh, no, there's the um, Cyclozar. Cyclozar takes rocks damage, of course, and we get regenerated, which is huge for us because we need the HP that we're probably going to get from switching back out. Let's we'll go just straight for the Moonblast because there's no reason not to click it. Um, he could Shed Tail again, of course. He could actually attack us. Guys, I don't remember all of this battle. I wish I did, but I don't. So he went for the Rapid Spin. Uh, obviously, it doesn't really do too much because it's Rapid Spin. But he gets his rocks away, and with Hippo Sleep, I can't really get them back up. But spins away rocks as a sacrifice. And that's fine. That's like that's fair. You would expect, you know, things like that. Hold on one second. I'll be right back. Okay, my apologies. I had to uh, get my laptop plugged up before it died on me. Yeah, I was doing this unplugs because I've been trying to do this for like the past two days by like, taking my laptop to work with me, but it hasn't been working because I haven't had the time. Uh, Gyarados comes out, and obviously we have to switch. And yes, I know you know Hippo isn't exactly the best switch, but my goal is you know to get the sand up 
I don't expect him to go for the water move here. As we go for Hippo, we get the sand up. Our, you know, our whole goal is chip damage. And I was aware that, you know, in, in, in prep, I was thinking about putting safety goggles on one of my Pokemon, but it just it never ended up actually working out that way. So, there's no safety goggles on uh, my team, and I was really hoping there's none on his team, too. So, he went for his Terra Flying to get rid of that four times weakness to Electric, which is good on his part because, um, you know, he would die. So, he's going to take Rock Sandwich, I'm going to get some health back from Leftovers. Obviously, I know he dies from a Waterfall here, or should die from a Waterfall here, which I fully expected. I was fully ready for this thing to die, but it didn't actually, it lived. And what amazed me about the fact that Hippo lived a waterfall was the fact that yes I'm max defense, but I'm not max HP. So it makes me wonder if that Gyarados was his like Cinderace counter was a little bit focused more on the bulky side as opposed to doing damage. But with Hippo being alive, that means I can use it later. Garrett, or I think I can't remember what I did here. I want to say I switched out. I know I switched out because I have low health. But um, I don't know what I switched out into. It looks like I'm going back into Gardevoir because I, I know I need the Cinderace alive at least for the time being. So Fat Gum comes back. Um, Gravity goes back out, and we really kind of sent Gardevoir out here. It's just a sacrifice. As we trace the intimidate, which is great for us because now he's at minus one. He already wasn't, you know, strong enough to take out the hippo. But minus one waterfall won't take out this thing. It will have two hits. But I'll take the I'll take the guard of our death. And I just went for the because it's still super effective. Moonblast probably still does a decent amount more, maybe. But Thunderbolt, I feel like, was always like this is the best play. We weren't gonna give it off anyways. So, Gardevoir goes down, Gyarados gets a kill. Sand is up, so I take this as my opportunity to bring out. Who did I bring out for this? I know um, if you happen to read the match score, the match score results, you know that Cinderace died to sand damage. So it has to be coming soon because there's not that many turns of sand left. But uh, I went for this thing because at the time I forgot that he wasn't an electric type anymore. Or that he wasn't a water type anymore, he's just flying. So I went for the Thunder Fang, which I really shouldn't have done, but he switched out anyways, which was great on which is you know great for us. And he sends out Leo, which is the Sylveon. Sylveon's gonna come out, eat the Thunder Fang. And die. It was a crit, but I'm not sure that the crit mattered too much. It might have though. Either way, that crit worked in our favor. We're very happy about that. Houndstone gets his first kill of the day. And I'm I'm really glad that I decided to use Houndstone in this dra in draft. Because I wasn't sure how well I was gonna be able to do with it. I'm not really great with using like sand teams. And obviously, you know, the premier sand choice is Tyranitar, but I've always liked Hippo more, less weaknesses and all that, and less common weaknesses outside of, you know, the water. In comes Annihilate, obviously we don't want to deal with an Annihilate, and I believe the sand is gone now, so this is where things start to get scary. Fat Gun comes out, and this, this right here. This thing you substitute. So obviously, um, substitute is a problem because we don't really have the safest way to take to, you know, just hit this thing. And me switching gives him a free sub, which means I could have basically clicked last respects and probably killed this thing, you know, after the sand damage. But that's fine. He does drain punch, hippo goes down, which means I'm not getting sand back up. So if anything, if I'm gonna do anything, it kind of has to be now. And I know I can't send my ghost type out because it's probably gonna die. 
to like Rage Fist or something. So we got Cinder. I believe we went back and forth with Cinderace for like two turns. I didn't want to U-turn here because obviously it's not very effective. And then Electro Balls, you know, it might not break up. Electro Ball obviously was for Gyarados in case he didn't tear the Gyarados. So we just went for Pyro Ball because, you know, damage. Court change was, of course, if he had hazards up because my team doesn't really handle hazards very well. You know what I realized? I haven't used Tatsugiri in a while. I'll check my matchup for week 9 to see if I can actually bring it. But, um, he sub, or sub phase, and I knew going into the making his sub that he was probably going to sub again anyways. And he did, he subbed again, so, uh, next turn I already know I've only got one turn left of survival. So, Deku sitting at 4 HP, we just took Powerball again because there's literally nothing else we can do. But I need to get him low enough to, um, not be able to make subs again. Like, he's got one more sub in him. He's got one more sub guaranteed. Where's my Infiltrator bond? So yeah, he's got one more sub guaranteed. That's fine. But, Sand is out. I still take Sand damage. He still takes Sand damage. Which makes it harder for him to try and get another sub up. So, knowing I only have, what, two Pokemon left, and I think he had three or four at this point, I'm gonna go for Guard War because I'm oh, not Guard War. Uh, Guard Chomp because I know Guard Chomp can do, you know, some work. Okay, so no, yeah, he's got three Pokemon left. So I went for sub myself. I probably could have just should have just attacked it, but I went for sub just to kind of see what he would do. And I wasn't sure if he was gonna bulk up. I wasn't sure if he was gonna, uh, you know, switch out or if he's gonna go for damage or you know what his goal was. So I, I just went straight for sub, and it, the sub was mainly for like spikes. Just see if I can get some more hazards up in case Hippo went down early. The Hippo pretty much did everything I needed it to do. Basically what I just did here was waste a turn of sand. He got a lot of health back, which makes me wonder if that's like the group. But yeah, the sand is gone now. Um, obviously no pun, that means I just have to attack. Because I can't just let him keep getting health back. I can't let him keep, you know, clicking sub. So, here's expecting the Dream Punch. And yes, I was Sand Veil. Game plan, of course, that's a kill. We're not bulky, by the way. We're max speed, max attack. We just went for sub and spikes just to get it off kind of quickly. Sell spikes with citrus. And then uh, he dies to Earthquake here, so we're not stressed today. I did also contemplate the fact that he might go into Gyarados here, but Earthquake is still always the safest way because we still outspeed Gyarados. And of course, oh, and he's got Glaceon on the back, and we haven't even seen it yet. So we know Glaceon is going to be an issue because, I mean, how do we beat it? Like, we have to hit this thing really, really hard. I just hit it super effectively. And I, I, I was going to say, uh, this is probably like the hardest part because it's two on two. I've got a pretty decent health uh, Guard Child, full health, Poundstone, and then he's got this thing in a Gyarados, which is somewhere around half, I think. So I was going to Terra. And just click rock slide but I wasn't sure I figured I might actually need to keep the Terra with Houndstone and this is probably the longest it took me the entire battle to like make it an actual decision because I wasn't sure how to play this does he just freeze drive me right now um, like what, what his plan was I had no idea but I know he's bulky, so I'll just go for a rock slide. Hopefully, you know, I get a crit or it just does a lot of damage or something. And then the move timer comes up, of course. Again, I was going to tear, but I decided not to. We're running out of time. Click rock slide. Maybe get a flinch. Maybe get a crit. Maybe it just does a lot of damage. It does not do as much as I would have liked it to. And he went for the snowscape, and I was like, okay, I'm screwed because now I can't kill Glaceon. And Glaceon with Ice Body, and then it's about to reveal leftovers, too. So. This thing just took my rock slide, got like 15% of his health back, and I like I kind of just kept waiting, kept going for rock slide, because I wasn't sure if Earthquake would do more damage. And then this is just, and this is what kind of angered me. And I'm like, oh great, now I have to deal with Wish two weeks in a row, and I'm gonna lose to Wish two weeks in a row.
So my hope and prayers was that it does not have protect. Because if it was wish protect, I was going to lose my mind. But I knew if he was wish, if he if he switched out into Gyarados, that it was probably going to die before it ever saw that wish. So still no flinches, and Garchomp finally dies to the freeze dry. Um, Glaceon gets his wish, and pretty much we're down to Houndstone versus the world again. It seems like every other week I'm relying on Houndstone to carry me through a game, which I guess that's what it's here for. But with the set, with the snow being up, raising the defense of Glaceon, plus the fact that it's Ice Body and Love Throwers, it's just bulky in general. Um, we're gonna have to just see how much Lash Respects does, and I feel like without the Snow Escape, Lash Respects just straight up kills. It's just I think Lash Respects just one shots if like if the if the Snow isn't up, Lash Respects I think one shots, but. Because the snow is up, it definitely doesn't. And he's got two more turns of snow. I don't know if this place has Shadow Ball. I know it's got Wish. I know it's got Freeze Dry. And I know it's got some other third move and Snow Skate. I don't think I saw a fourth move on it. Unless I just forgot. So I go and I click. In case he is Shadow Ball, Glaceon, I went, went ahead and Terra. Because I wasn't going to. I didn't really see a reason to. But I knew his. Um, Terra Flying was Gyarados, so I didn't have to worry about like Terra Blast replacing on or anything like that. So that suspect comes out. And it was a huge chunk, even with the even with the ice bot with the ice boost from the snow. And this is definitely more than enough to, to hit KO. But this is where things get tricky. Oh, by the way, um, Nico is the first person to take me over 20 minutes in battle. So even though we have the 60 minute timer now, I haven't had to use it. Or I haven't had to use more than uh, 20 minutes. And I've never actually gone to timer. But he switches out here, he goes into his Gyarados. Which I thought... I thought the Gyarados was at less health. But it's at a lot of health. So we'll go for Lash Respects again. Almost takes him out. Almost takes a while, even at minus one, and you, you have to understand how this hurt my feelings, especially after that wish. Without that minus one, that thing dies. Um, obviously, I think. Um, I hope, was this the turn that we went for Thunder Fang? I think this is the turn that we went for Thunder Fang. I kept. I don't know why I kept trying to go for Thunder Fang. Or did we just? Oh no, we just clicked Master Specs. I think I, at some point I realized Master Specs just kind of wins the game because. I don't know. Okay, well. <coughs> but he switched out again, and then when he switched out, I was like, oh, I know what you're doing. He's going for the, he's dropped, dropped my attack so that last respect does less. So I went for the Thunder Fang, obviously it doesn't really do much. He does get the para though, not that it really mattered at this point, because I was just clicking the last respects next turn anyways. Um... Let's see. Yeah. I just went for last respects because I knew at that point I kind of win. He doesn't. He can't wish because um, even if he was faster than me, he's not faster now. So last respects kills at minus one. And then I knew at minus two. Um, I wasn't sure at minus two if last respects still killed the Gyarados. But I gave it a shot. I gave it a shot. I didn't really have, you know, many other options. Of course, he can't wish anymore. But, and I'm at full health, but Terra Blast, I'm pretty sure, kills me. So, that's a lot we can do. Lash of Specs. Oh, and I honestly thought Gyarados would have been faster than me, but it wasn't. Lash of Specs does, in fact, get the kill. And that is game. And we take down Liverpool FC. Um, I think this is our first time battling Nico on a console. Mm -hmm. If not, the last time would have been like TPL Season 3. But good game to Nico, that was an extremely close battle. It went literally down to the wire, because I feel like Terra Blast probably killed House though. But um, we'll see you guys next week, week nine, the final week. I'm a little bit nervous because, you know, this win doesn't necessarily guarantee me a playoff spot, but it gives me a good shot. I still have a good shot, like I'm still sitting in the playoff race right now, but I'm worried that me in week nine is 
it's gonna be a little bit more difficult than we would like but hey you know again good game Nico Nico's pretty much locked for playoffs even with this um, loss because he had five wins or six wins early five wins he had five wins like really early but um, yeah we'll see you next week as we take on the next and final team with our playoffs